Do you think that automating your workflows with AI agents is just a bit too complicated? Well, the truth is anybody can do it. In this video, I'm going to take you from beginner to expert, teaching you how to build powerful workflows with AI agents inside n 8 So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's get started with a beginner level AI agent. So jump into a new workflow right in n 8 and let's go ahead and add an AI agent node. Beautiful. Now, in order to get this to work, we need to connect the chat model. And there's tons to choose from. Lately, I've been using a lot of Claude A. Claude A is really amazing. It's better at English than ChatGPT. ChatGPT is good as well. You can hook up whichever one you want. I have some videos on how to hook up the various ones. But today, we're going to hook up Claude A. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to Claude A API. Go to anthropic.com forward slash API. Uh, click start building here. It'll give you a form to fill out. You're going to have to log in. Wonderful. And once you're on the screen, you're all signed up. You can go ahead and click get API keys. You can create a new key here and grab it. Call it whatever you want. It'll give you a key. You're also going to have to put some money on there. So you can go over to billing, put some money on there. I put $50 on this account. So you can see. So you can just click add funds. You're going to need a little bit of money on there. Once you have that going, go ahead and go back to n 8 Let's click on Claude A here. Let's click create a new account. You can paste the API key here. Now, basically, we are all good to go. Now, I would choose the newest version of Sonnet because it's a little bit better than this older version. But outside of that, this is already working. So we can click chat. We can say, hi, how are you today? What is the capital of France? And then it should tell me. Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. The capital of France is Paris, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So technically, we've already built a pretty simple agent that does something. We can talk to it. But it's the same functionality as using the chat right inside of Cloud A. So now let's go ahead and start adding some things so that the AI can really start doing a good job. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and double click on the AI agent. Let's click define below right here under source for prompt. Okay. And let's grab this chat input and text it over. Now we can start prompting based on the chat input so that whenever we text into chat, it will have guardrails or do whatever basically the prompt says. So here what I'm going to do is translate whatever I say into Spanish. And then we can save that. Let's go ahead and chat and be like, hi, please subscribe to YouTube. Let's check it here. Hola, por favor, subscribirse a YouTube. All right, now let's do an intermediate level AI agent. So now we can start adding memory here. Now this will allow the AI agent to remember our past iterations, our past chats, basically. Now you could hook up Postgres. You can use Supabase, it's free and it's really easy to connect. However, today the easiest to connect is window buffer memory. So that's what we're going to use. And we're going to remember the last five chats. That's the context window length. How many chats in the past the AI actually remembers. Now what we can do is we can go into the AI tools agent. Let's go ahead and chat with it and be like, hi, my name is Austin Reed. Beautiful. Let's ask what's the capital of Paris. What is my name? Let's see if it remembers. Your name is Austin Reed as you mentioned in your first message. Beautiful. So now it's actually has a little bit of memory, and a little bit of chat context. Now, I believe at this point, it's time to give it some more advanced functionality. So we can start playing with tools. Now, tools are things that you can give the AI to give it kind of superpowers. And you can build your own tools with code. Tools can be other workflows. But there's also a lot of pre-made tools in here as well. So you can do a calculator. You can do Airtable where it interacts with an Airtable. You can give it Gmail so that it interacts with your emails, Google Drive. I mean, there's tons of things that you can do in here and the possibilities are essentially limitless. Mm -hmm. But basically you're giving the AI the power to use one of these tools as if a human would use a tool like a hammer. So to start out, the easiest tool to show you guys is the Wikipedia tool. So I'm gonna add the Wikipedia tool and now we're going to ask it a question about Wikipedia. So, according to Wikipedia, how old is Paris? And now it's going to use the Wikipedia tool, see? 
It searched Wikipedia, and it's keep searching Wikipedia, and it's getting the answer for you. And it got the answer. Based on the Wikipedia information, Paris has very ancient origins, and the first mention of settlement appears to be mid-first century. So there you go. Now we're essentially using tools. Now, since we're still on the intermediate level, it's time to talk about the different types of agents. So if we double-click our agent here, we see that there is all kinds of different types of agents here. So the tools agent is good for generally almost everything. It can use tools. It's really good. Conversational agent is really good at just talking to, doing things like that. Open AI functions agent uses the functions within the open AI platform. Pretty simple. Plan and execute agent is really good for giving control of multiple AIs or multiple different workflows within your N8N. It's good in a administrative kind of sense. If you can think of like a project manager, that would be your plan and execute agent. Your react agent is really good for a stem type of stuff. So anything that has a lot of complex reasoning, the react agent is really good. And your SQL agent is really good for interfacing with SQL databases to find and manipulate information. Now to conclude the intermediate tutorial, I'm going to talk about the required specific output format. Sometimes you don't want it to come out with a big blob of text. Instead, you want it to come out in a specific format that you can use later on, separated information, something like that. So what we can do is we can click here and click on the output parser and add a structured output parser. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to output all the information in the way that you specify. So, for example, if we were to make Twitter posts and we wanted a list of Twitter posts, we could go here and instead of cities, we could put posts and here we could put string. We don't have to put anything else here. Okay. Now, this in JSON is a list. Okay. This in JSON is an item. So we can put topic here and we can put string. So now this will come out with a list of posts and a topic. So let's go ahead and go here. In order for this to work, we need to change the prompt. So we have a chat input, which is great. Let's go. You are to take the subject down below and create beautiful so we have a simple prompt here you are to take the subject down below and create five twitter posts for it each post should be 180 characters or less also you must summarize the topic for all of the posts the output should be one topic and five posts so let's go ahead and test this out and i'm gonna say flying an airplane it's not going to use the Wikipedia tool, I don't think, because it doesn't need to. Beautiful. And so now we have an output. And this output now has a list of posts. One, two, three, four, five. And the topic itself. So all of these posts are essential tips and facts about flying. Here's a fact. Here's weather. Here's flying at night. So as you can see, you can structure the information in ways that you can later manipulate really easily within NADEN. All right, now let's get into the advanced portion of the tutorial. So in order to have a more advanced AI agent, the first thing we need to do is give it a base memory of documents that it can search through. You can imagine this in a customer service context. Basically, you have a bunch of FAQ documents and, and training documents for your customer service agents, and you want to give all those documents to an AI so that it can generate answers for the people that interact with it. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to start a vector database. Now, the vector database is basically a memory for the AI that the AI can then access. It's not a memory of the chat. It's the AI's knowledge. It's the AI's brain. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect a vector memory. So first, we're going to go over to Pinecone. Now, this is totally free. All right, so when you first sign up, it will give you an API key directly. All you need to do is copy this API key. Go back over to N8N. Let's create a new Pinecone node, Pinecone Vector Store. And we're going to retrieve documents for an AI agent as a tool. And here, let's go ahead and click Edit. And you can paste your API key in right in there, and it should work for you. Now, I've already done this. 
So let's go ahead and jump out. Do you guys think that building AI agents is a little bit complicated and would like to have a little bit of free support? Well, I'm here for you. I'm offering a free WhatsApp community for anybody who is obsessed with automation and in it in. So if you're interested in joining, please click the link down below. Now, the next thing that you need to do is you need to create a vector database or a database for the memory of the AI. So let's go back over to Pinecone. Let's close. All right, now go ahead and click on database and indexes and click create index. Call it whatever you want. There we go. Now this part is really important. So this needs to be exactly the same as what you define here in in Aiden. So for example, in this AI, if we're using OpenAI, imagine we have OpenAI connected. Now quick thing, for those of you who need to connect OpenAI, all you need to go is platform.openai.com. Go to dashboard here, click on API keys, and just create a new key. Then go over here, click edit, paste the API key in, and you're good to go. So now that that's connected, let's go ahead and work on the vector store. Let's delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. I'll just rebuild this entire thing for you. Let's start out with a pine cone and we're going to go add documents to vector store. Beautiful, we have our pine cone account here. We have insert documents. So next we're going to go to embeddings and we're going to go use embeddings, open AI. The important thing here is that you make sure that these embeddings here are exactly the same as on the pine cone right here. So text embedding three small needs to be with text embedding three small. Now text embedding three small is really, really good for Q and A type of stuff. Now to quickly explain the difference between these, your ADA is going to cost the less. It also has the less quality. Your small has a slightly better quality and your large has even better quality. These change how the information is stored into your database, how many data points are stored in the database. And basically, to explain how this works, when you import a document into a vector storage, it turns that document into a mathematical formula. Now, you don't need to know any of that because NADIN is going to do it for you, but it's important for you to understand the concept here. So we're going to choose the text embedding three small, and we're going to make sure that on Pinecone we're choosing the small as well. I find the small works good in most cases. We're going to click create index and we're going to give that a couple minutes to boot up. While that's booting up, we can jump out of here, double click on the vector store and choose the index from the list. Hello. So it's already booted up. Now this is pretty good, except for it's not going to do anything. Now we have to add a document node and we're going to put a default data loader in here. And the type of data we're going to put is binary. And the reason why is because we're going to pass a file to it instead of passing a JSON. And in, in terms of the data format, automatically detect by meme type works really, really well. If you're having some issues here, you can select what type of file it is. But that being said, this should work just fine. Now, below that, we have to add a text splitter. Now, we're going to do a token splitter. And basically what this does is this is an overlap in the database. So what happens is, is when you save a document to the database, it will save it in chunks, okay? And the AI will grab an entire chunk at the same time and read that whole chunk and then determine if the chunk has the access to the information that it needs. So in order to make these vector databases more efficient, we have something called chunk size and overlap. Now chunk size is how big these chunks are or how much data that AI is grabbing at a time. And the overlap is basically saving the data twice. So we could have this chunk here and this chunk here. The overlap is, is like this. So this chunk will have a little bit of this chunk and this chunk will have a little bit of that chunk. Now, why is that important? Well, because when the AI is grabbing chunks randomly, it can see, oh, I have a little bit of the answer of what I need right here. So let me go ahead and go to the chunk before it, grab that one, and that should be the answer to my question. So it will essentially speed up your vector database to be able to grab the information even faster. So we can put a chunk overlap here of 10. That should be fine for now. There's a lot of theory about chunk sizes and chunk overlaps depending on 
what type of data you're saving and what type of agent you're making. I'm not going to dive super deep into that, but you can use an AI like ChatGPT or Claude A to tell you some ideal figures for the type of agent you're trying to build. Go ahead and link this up here and we'll give it a title. Hi, we'll be like file and let's go ahead and put file here, accepted file types. Let's put .txt. Here I have a document of a bunch of customer service conversations between a cell phone service company and their customers. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go over and we're going to test this step really quick. It's going to bring up the form. I'm going to just choose the form and click submit. Beautiful. And it's going to give me this. And now we should be able to just click play right here and it will load it directly into the Pinecone storage and we're ready to go. So to verify it's in the storage, let's go over to Pinecone, let's click refresh. And there we go. As you can see, we now have our mathematic formulas in our database. Of course, we're not going to understand this, but if you click show one more, it'll show the text here, but these are the values that the AI is going to read. So here first, we're going to have to create a prompt. Okay, we have to give whatever tools that we attach to the AI agent, whatever custom tools, a name so that agent knows which tools to use when, okay? So let's go ahead and add a tool. We're gonna add the pine cone and we have to give the same name, company data. And the description is not that important. Beautiful. Now we choose our pine cone index that we save the data and we're gonna add the embedding and make sure it's exactly the same as the embedding that we added previously. Now let's go ahead and chat and now it will check the Pinecone. As you can see, it did grab some information from Pinecone and then it says, I'm sorry to hear your cell phone service isn't working. All right, now that we have retrieved data from our Pinecone storage, let's talk about some advanced details here. So if we jump into our AI agent, we notice that there's different options here. I wanna talk a little bit about those. So your system message is going to be the message that is sent before the AI sends its prompt. This will help you put further guardrails on what the AI is supposed to do. Your max iterations is how many times the AI can process and use its various tools in order to come with a conclusion. Return intermediate steps means that as the AI is processing the information and using the different tools, it's outputting what it thinks every single time and automatically pass through binary images down here. That means if you have any images from before the AI chain, it'll just pass through those images to the other side so you can still access that binary or file information. Now, talking a little bit about some advanced use cases here, if we click on the tool node, we can now call innate in workflows. You can give it a name. So you could make, for example, a workflow that uses Zenros to scrape websites, and you could call it Web Scraper. And then you could go to the AI and say, hey, use the Web Scraper tool to give you information about this. And then the other workflow can return information from Zenros, do whatever you want on the website, maybe do some automations, and then get back to you. This workflow could also be post to Twitter, for example. So you can be like, hey, use the post to Twitter tool to post these six posts to Twitter. And then it goes through and it runs the workflow, posts to Twitter, and then you're good to go. Now, another really important tool here is your code tool. Now, of course, you can put any custom JavaScript code in here. So you can give it some code to format HTML or to unformat HTML and just clean out the text so that you don't have to use any API tokens for that. Code tool is very useful. Another one is your simple HTTP request tool. Now, of course, this is good for doing API calls to create videos or to do all kinds of different things for instances where NADN does not have a node that's already available. It is really, really good. And then you have a bunch of other tools here and I'm not going to go into detail about every single tool here. It's pretty obvious what some of these tools do, but you can imagine the possibilities if you give an AI agent access to some workflows that have other AI agents and other workflows inside of it. You can have a master AI that controls things that does amazing workflows for you and automates your entire everything. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to level up your automation game even further, I am building a free WhatsApp community for anybody obsessed with automation. So if that's something you're interested, click the link down below and I'll see you guys next time.